Second, so the first passage was about their obnoxious question and how Allah says, that, oh, they'll know. Pretty soon they're going to realize. Now, uh, one thing I didn't mention, I should mention about that last passage is, you know how there's two times the question? There are three threats in the Qur'an. Please don't forget that. The, if you study the entire Qur'an, there are three kinds of threats, three kinds of warnings. The first warning is, nation, if you don't listen to your prophet, you're going to be destroyed. That was the warning given to the people of Nuh, Lut, Salih, Shu'ayb, alayhim salam, Fir'aun, you name it, those were the people that were given warnings, if you don't listen, your nation shall be destroyed, right? That's the first kind of threat in the Qur'an. The second kind of threat is what will happen to people on Judgment Day, okay? The death, by the way, is not a threat, because death is a reality. That's not, I'm not threatening you, one day you'll die, like, thanks, I already knew that. That's not a threat. So the first threat is destruction of nations. The second threat is Judgment Day, where you will be held accountable, where you will be brought to trial. The trial is the threat. The third threat in the Qur'an is hell. So there's three, destruction of nations. What else did I say? Let me hear it from you. Day of judgment and then hell. Now, the thing about destruction of nations is do people know when it's coming? No. It will come to them all of a sudden and they'll have no realization. The mercy of Allah is that our messenger was the last messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With him ended the destruction of nations. There is no more destruction of nations. That's done. Okay, so that's a mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal that that door of threat closed forever. The last time those threats were issued, they were issued to Quraysh. That's it. There's no more that one nation will be completely annihilated or wiped out or whatever else. Okay? So when they see, especially, see a flood happen in some country and see Allah ka azab de khuzra, shame on you. That's not what Quran says. That's what your, you know, Pindu interpretation was. You need to stop doing that. That is a test from Allah, not a adab of Allah. We don't say that's a adab from Allah. That's a, that's a torture from Allah. We don't say that. Okay? Now, anyway, so there were three threats. One of them comes to people, they have no clue. They have no clue what's going on. An earthquake came, a flood came, nobody even knows what's happening, and all of a sudden they're done. Isn't it? But if you look at these ayat, kalla sayalamun thumma kalla sayalamun, they will know. Oh yeah, they will know. Which means there are two punishments where people will what? They will know. I told you how many threats are there? Three. But one of them, people won't even know what's happening. Which is which one? Destruction of nations. What, what, are, what are the two left? Day of judgment? Hellfire. When judgment day begins, people are terrified. Oh, and then they know. Oh my God. This is... And وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا They will find everything they did standing in front of them. They will know. But even that isn't knowing until they see hell. Because right now they're seeing you're guilty. What are they not seeing? The jail that, that awaits you. When they see that jail, then they realize, no, that when I realized I'm guilty, I still didn't realize how serious it was until I saw that jail. There are two levels of realization for criminals. One on judgment day, the other on the day of resurrection. One on judgment day, the other on the day they see, at the end of it when they see hellfire. One of them is kalla sayalamun. The next one is what? Thumma kalla sayalamun. And thumma is tarakhi, it's a long time. Thumma doesn't just mean moreover, it actually means then after a long time they'll realize again, oh, wait till, you, wait till they see it again. In this, Allah has basically said to the criminals, you are going to be singing a different tune on Judgment Day. Wait till you see it. Oh boy, and wait till you see what? Hell on top of that. And you'll notice as the surah continues, Allah will first describe Judgment Day, then He'll describe Hellfire. He'll actually Himself do tafsir of kalla sayalamun, and then what? Thumma kalla sayalamun. He'll explain it Himself. Subhanallah. Anyhow, so now quickly I want to get to these ayat. Brief translation first. Alam naj'alil arda mihada. Didn't we make the earth into a bedding, a flooring, something laid out and vast? Wal jibala autada. Didn't we make the mountains into pegs that are deeply rooted into the ground, that don't budge and don't move? 
وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَاجَا And we made you into pairs. وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتَا And we made your sleep into something that cuts you off. When you, basically meaning when you sleep, you're cut off from work, you're cut off from your problems, you're cut off from everything. وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتَا okay? And the, the day of Sabbath, Sabbath, right? From the same origin, the Jews were cut off from all their work. And they were cut off from all their business activities. And it, it cut them, right? وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa, And we made the night into a garment. We made the night into an outfit, clothing. وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ maasha, And we made the daytime into a, ma- a time and a means by which you can make a good living and have a good life. وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا shidada, And we raised above you, we built on top of you seven intense, as if to say seven immobile buildings, seven impenetrable buildings. Other places, Qur'an will talk about the skies and say, هَلْ تَرَى مِنْ فُطُورِ Do you see any crack therein? Do you see any opening therein? وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجًا وَهَاجَ And we made a brilliant, constantly blazing heated lamp that lights up over and over and over again. Now I'll stop here for a second and go take a step back. Allah talked about the earth being vast, the mountains being pegs, we are created in pairs, your sleep cuts you off, the night and then the day, so far, right? That's what he's talked about. And then he, he's, he spoke about the, the, you know, the skies and the sun. That's, these are the things that he spoke about. But the language he used is remarkable. The language he used, everything he described, he describes something that can be compared to something we do. So for the for instance, he said, Alam Najali Arda Mihada. Didn't we make the earth into a bedding? Who makes bedding? We do. Mihad is also a cradle for a baby. Mahatul Firash, Mahdan, Basattuhu, Wawattahu, Yukalu Lil Firash. It's also used for a bed, Li Withara. So the idea, Allah says, you make a bed. And you make your bed comfortable and compare your bed to the bed I made. Who knows how to make bed, a bed better? Because I made the entire earth into a bed. SubhanAllah. All kinds of creatures sleep on the earth, don't they? And your bed is just a tiny dot on the bed that Allah made. Your bed isn't something special, it's actually just a small piece, a speck on this bedding that Allah created. He made, a, he made a bedding for creatures at the bottom of the ocean floor. That's when he made the earth into a mihad. So it's like, yeah, I know how to make stuff, but no, not like that. Well, jibala autada, he made mountains into pegs. Pegs are used in Arabic, ancient Arabic culture for tents. You know, mountains, when you ask a kid, kid, kids to draw a mountain, what does it look like? Tents, doesn't it? You make your tents. Allah says, when I make tents, they look like that. When the wind blows, what happens to your tents? And when the wind blows, what happens to his tents? SubhanAllah. Can you compare your tents to mine? It's reminding the human being of how humble his efforts are and how mighty Allah's creation is. He says, وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ azwaja," And we made you into pairs. You, can, you, did not, you do not exist as a unicellular organism or a unisexual organism. You could not have survived. You could not have existed if it wasn't for a mother and a father coming together. You were created in pairs. You don't have a choice in the matter. You don't get to decide that. There are parts of your being that are just going to remain incomplete unless you're in pairs. There's parts of your existence that will remain unfulfilled until you're in pairs. That's just how, how Allah made you. Even in terms of your spiritual existence, our messenger would say alayhi salatu wasalam, that it's half of your deen. It's, there's a reason for that. You are not, you can't just say, well, I don't need the opposite gender anymore. I don't need to be in pairs. You can't. Azwaj also, by the way, means groups. Azwaj doesn't just mean pairs, it also means groups. He created you in societies. You can't live on your own. I don't need anybody. Yeah, you kind of do. You kind of do. You will eventually need the help of another human being in something or the other. You can't survive on your own. And people who do, you know how, what happens to them. People who live out in the wilderness by themselves, don't meet anybody. Um, they have the most interesting personalities. <laughs> right? Normally, you, you, you are meant to be in society. You're meant to be around others. That's the other meaning of khalaqnakum azwaja. He says he made your sleep into something that cuts you off. You would like to, st- you, lo- you love life. 
You would love to stay alive forever and asleep is a kind of death, isn't it? You lost many hours just on that bed. You could have been having fun, you could have been enjoying yourself, you could have been eating, partying, traveling, working, making money, spending money. You can't do any of that because you're what? You're sleeping. You don't have a choice. You can fight it all you want. Your body will give up on you and you will die the death of sleep until you're resurrected again. You're incapable. He says, you try to cover up your body, you cover your clothes with garments. I cover the entire earth with night. I give that libas to the night, to the earth. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa. And when I cover it up, you could try to turn your lights on inside, but none of these lights will get rid of the overwhelming darkness of night. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa. وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشَ I made the morning into a time where earnings can be made. Somebody says, no, 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 I shall farm only at night. Good luck with that. Because what do you need? The animals. What do you need? The sunlight. What do you, all the means by which the, the earth can be sustained are happening in the day. And by the way, even though we say things like the city that never sleeps, right? I used to live in the city that never sleeps. It sleeps. You, you want to go into the city, go after midnight, there's not going to be any traffic. Unless the GW bridge, then don't go, it's a 24-hour nightmare. But other than that, businesses are closed, Wall Street's closed, the stock market's closed. Banks are closed, offices are closed. It's not the same as the daytime. The world over, when is most business happening? During the day, you can't even help it. Try to change it. Try to make it that everybody's sleeping in the day and we only work at night. Yes, there is such a thing as the night shift for people who couldn't find a better job, right? Yes, time, okay. So one, one last thing, وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ two, two more ayat, it'll take one minute. وَبَنَيْنَا فَوْقَكُمْ سَبْعًا شِدَادًا He placed above you seven intense buildings. Seven, you have construction, you look at the ceiling, wow, this is so nice and round. Look at the chandelier, that's so nice. And then Allah says, look at my ceiling. And then He says, in that ceiling, I put a lamp in there, I put a chandelier in there too. And it lights up every day with more and more intense heat. It doesn't, it doesn't burn out. Wahaj actually means it burns and it burns again and it burns again and it burns again and the heat doesn't go down. Imagine if the sun was giving different levels of heat every day. Well, what would happen to, what kind of destruction would happen on this earth? It's not just that it's a siraj, but it's also what? Wahaj. Wahaj means it keeps on giving the same heat over and over again. Shiddatul hur. You know? That compare your lamp to his. And so the first part of the argument, I haven't finished the argument, the first part of the argument is no, what you make is weak compared to what I make. That's just the first part of the argument and we'll, we'll build on that argument after Salah.